From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Speedsters Richard Noble and Andy Green will attempt to set a new land speed record in South Africa in 2012 on the very flat Huxkian Pan in the Northern Cape. They hope to travel at 1,600 kilometers an hour using a new car with the rather strange sounding name of the Bloodhound. The Bloodhound will have the equivalent horsepower of 180 Formula One racing cars and will blast from zero to 1,600 kilometers an hour in 42 seconds. To achieve this, the vehicle will make use of a rocket, a jet from a fighter aircraft and the engine of an F1 racing car. This is the most extraordinary project I've ever, ever been involved in. Um, what we're doing is creating the, uh, the most advanced land speed record car that's ever been built. Bloodhound SSC has a very unusual objective for a land speed record project. It's not to set a speed or even a new record. It's to get everybody, everybody from 6 to 96 years old, interested and excited by mathematics, engineering, science, technology. The objective here is to, um, is to share the project and all its technology as widely as we possibly can. But the key thing to all this is education. Whether it could be bridges, whether it could be fashion, it could be fast cars. People love engineering. I am a Royal Air Force fighter pilot, but first and foremost, I'm a mathematician. And that is a way I not only think about the numbers, the incredible numbers involved with flying fast jets from day to day, but also the truly astonishing numbers that Bloodhound SSC is throwing up. Just to give you an idea, the bodywork at these speeds has got to take loads of the order of 12 tonnes per square metre. I mean, it's got to be as tough as a submarine. Nobody's ever done anything like this before. When we are accelerating this car, it's going to be peaking at 3G, 60 miles an hour per second. At peak speed, it will be covering the length of four football fields per second. The wheel rims will be experiencing 50,000 radial G at the rim. Those sorts of numbers are truly astonishing, and if you don't understand them, truly frightening. And as the driver, actually, that's not a good thing. I'm in the lucky position as the world's fastest mathematician of being able to understand and be comfortable with those numbers, understand the engineering solutions. We have to remember that this is an adventure. It's an engineering adventure. We don't know what the final outcome is going to be. And uh, even if we don't get to 1,000 miles per hour, it won't necessarily be a failure if what we have done is inspire people. There's going to be a huge industrial revolution. And to cope with this, we've got to have the scientists. We've got to have people studying mathematics, science, engineering. Because basically, unless we do this, Britain simply isn't going to be able to play. Other headlines making news this week include a 500 million rand expansion program for a flexible plastic packaging film producer. Plans for South Africa to host global climate change negotiations in December and a containerized modular ICT data center solution. A 100% black-owned flexible plastic packaging film producer is embarking on a 500 million rand expansion program to substitute imports and to capture a larger slice of the burgeoning African markets. Martin is going to buy a new line. Um, a new line will cost close on to around about 350 million. Even though we're the only local producer of BOPP in South Africa, we only produce a third of what the market requires. So there's another 18,000 tons, which is close on two-thirds, um, that the market requires that's importing at the moment. So the expansion and the new line is going to be able to, to give us opportunity to supply the South African market. We've used the strength of the RAND 
to import. We were, um, we've only got production of 12,000 tons. So what we did last year was we say, okay, what is our plan? We need to expand the business. To do that, we need to increase our market share. So what we did is we imported close on to 3,000, 3,500 tons of film. Our goal is to cover the whole South African um, um, market. And that's why we, our, our strategic goal is to get a new line. The eyes of the world will look upon Durban in December when South Africa hosts the global climate change negotiations, but the country will need to realistically manage expectations regarding what could emerge from the conference. I think that we need to start looking at uh, how do we keep that tone to climb? What is it that we are going to need to do? What is it that we need from the international community to do more to reach uh, what we listed in Copenhagen? And then I think the challenge for business, and I think we've engaged with it around the policy process in quite a lot of detail, is to say what does that mean for business sector by sector and then eventually industry by industry. Um, and that's the way that we would want to, to, to go about it. And now it's becoming fairly evident that the global climate policy will consist of individual national country actions joined up to some framework. Now within these individual national country actions, the private sector will play an increasingly important role, both on adaptation and mitigation through technology and finance. Now, in my experience of having, two, of having helped two governments develop these strategies, I don't think either the private sector nor the public sector fully grasp the opportunity that exists here. Success in the green economy will be driven by business through government and not by government through business. So that was a real strong message that came out of it to say that here is a real opportunity for business to show leadership and to really move us forward on this. Local technology infrastructure company Telenetics Technology Solutions is offering the global information and communication technology industry a modular data center which uses a standard shipping container as the basis for its design and construction. Telenetics is currently, um, we traditionally were uh, a, a, a switching center uh, manufacturer. We are now um, evolved um, also into the broadcasting where we're doing containerized, modularized solutions um, for the broadcasting industry and now uh, the ICT sector from a data storage, cloud computing, warehousing. And the targets for us look very favorable uh, in terms of the order books that's now been extended. The solution in itself is poised to address the issues of economic meltdown because of the reduced capital outlay that's required for the solution. But not just the capital outlay, but the overall operational cost of running a unit like this is far reduced over and above its conventional brick and mortar predecessor. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.